Uh, Ambassador, uh, were you uh, in the meeting between President Trump and Chinese President Xi in June 2019 in Japan? I can't hear you. I'm sorry, Senator. Yeah, I, you couldn't hear me because I didn't have my microphone on. There was a meeting in, on the outskirts of the G20 in, in Osaka between the president and President Xi, and I was in that meeting. If I don't, okay. I don't know whether that's the one you're referring to, but that's the, but that's the situation. Well, well the, the reason, reason I, I asked is about an hour ago, the Washington Post published a story that says uh, former National Security Advisor Bolton said that at one point in that meeting, President Trump, quote, turned the conversation into the coming U.S. presidential election, alluding to China's economic capability to affect the ongoing campaigns pleading with Xi to ensure he'd win. That's the end of the quote. Absolutely untrue. Never happened. I was there. I have no recollection of that ever happening. I don't believe it's true. I don't believe it ever happened. OK, so now you now you fully recollect that you were there. No, I was at the meeting. Would I have recollected something as crazy as that? Of course I would recollect it. I was at the meeting. I told you, you that, sure at the beginning that you were like at the that meeting. Happened. So now that I know you're at the meeting, uh, you, in essence, dispute uh, Ms., uh, Mr. Bolton's account of what took place, right? I told, yes, that's correct. I, I mean, I, I, I don't want you to create the impression that I'm being deceptive. I said what meeting I was at, and this never happened in it, for sure. Okay. Completely crazy. Oh, I, I, I assume, assume it's the same, same meeting, and if it's not, we'll find out. Because yeah. if it's true, it shows uh, how clear it is that the administration doesn't really have any intention of actually solving our trade problems with China. The tariffs remain in place because China still hasn't dismantled overcapacity, hasn't stopped stealing American intellectual property, uh, hasn't stopped subsidizing its own state industries. Uh, and so uh, th this would be a really outrageous use of presidential power uh, instead of trying to solve our trade problems. Let me turn to something else. Shortly after Congress approved the USMCA, Mexico's television regulator issued a new interpretation that severely limits the amount of advertising U.S. media firms can show on their paid TV channels in the country. The U.S. industry argues that this action discriminates against U.S. TV providers in violation of USMCA and will undercut U.S. jobs that support their programming in Mexico. Ambassador, would Mexico be in compliance with its USMCA obligations if this regulation isn't modified by July the 1st? So I would say uh, I, I'm aware of this issue. I want to study it. But if you want an answer right now, I'd say no, they would not be in compliance. That's my opinion right now. And I want to study it. But I completely agree with you, Senator. Uh, uh, I, and I, I agree with you uh, that because uh, USTR viewed this as a violation of NAFTA six years ago and successfully resolved it until this latest change. So we're going to start off on July 1st with Mexico being out of compliance from the very start. That seems like a horrible way to kick off a new agreement. Uh, I hope that uh, can you commit to us that you will uh, review this and make sure that Mexico is in full compliance with its obligation, assuming that it's the same view USTR uh, had six years ago? Absolutely. And if they're not, we'll bring a case against them, Senator. Yes, I'll commit to that. Thank you for that answer. I appreciate that. Uh, on Sunday, we heard troubling reports that two USTR employees who had been intimately involved in negotiating USMCA had approached companies offering to serve as paid advisors. Apparently, these employees were looking to cash in on helping companies navigate USMCA's complex rules, rules that these employees helped draft. Uh, and they even tried to steer companies to a website that they had set up for their future lobbying firm. Do you know if USTR's ethics office told these employees that they could approach companies for future lobbying work while still on the government payroll? So, so uh, I, I read that story also, uh, um, Senator. Uh, so I would say the situation is this. One, they're career employees. Two, they went through the ethics office at USTR. And three, I'm told that career employees, as opposed to political employees, can do things like this. So, um, uh, I'm as troubled by it as you are. Well, okay, I appreciate that because I think we should have a very clear uh, understanding 
uh, of what is and is not acceptable. And I, I, I don't care whether you're career or political. It seems to me that you negotiate uh, elements of agreement, in this case, in the automotive industry. And then while you're still on the government payroll, you set up a website and you pursue your own interests. That's the ultimate essence of the revolving door. That's what uh, doesn't have people have faith and confidence uh, in their government. I hope you'll look at the internal uh, questions of whether that can happen or not. I'd like to follow up with you. All right. I, I want to follow up. I completely agree with you. Completely. Thank you. Thank you.